Okay, there. So, I'm doing a little bit of Pro Tools today, and we need to set this up to do some mixing in quad. Now, I'm in a non HD system, so I'm going to do a couple of things differently than you would in an HD system. First of all, make sure your playback engine is properly selected. So, I'm using UAD Apollo. Um, set your samples appropriately. I'm at 512 right now because I kind of don't care. Next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to come into my I.O. And I don't know, let's just, for giggles, say that there, all of this stuff was, was not here. Now, you may need to, if you're jumping around systems, you may want to save some defaults using um, sort of export settings on these things. So I'm going to set my input paths to default. That's going to grab all of my available hardware input paths. Go over here, do the same thing, and hit default. Um, and you may see this monitor and audition path. Don't pay attention to those things. They're not important. We, we don't need to worry about those right now at all. Um, if you were in an HD system, you would be able to have uh, alternative surround and quad output uh, points there, but we're not in an HD system, uh, so we, we won't be able to use those. So my output is default, and then the next thing, you'll see I've got all these buses, but nothing is really mapped properly, so I'm actually going to select all, delete everything, hit default, and then I've got buses now that are mapped to my outputs. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I kind of like having more than 25 buses, so I'm going to come in here new stereo. I'm going to say 50 stereo buses, auto create subpaths. That auto create subpath thing is important because it allows me to have this um, mono section of the uh, of the bus there as well. Let's hit OK. Uh, if I had tracks in this session that had outputs and inputs set, it would just have completely blown those out. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create some tracks. So I'm going to create three stereo audio tracks because what I'm going to do is I'm going to create two um, quad bounces, one for front, one for rear, um, and then one for stereo mix down. And then I'm going to create, uh, let's say, three stereo auxes and, I don't know, ten mono audio tracks. Maybe a couple stereo ones. All right, so we're gonna call this T mix down. We're gonna call you quad front bounce, quad rear bounce. All right, we're gonna call this stereo mix bus, uh, quad front. And I'm not going to bother naming anything else right now. Um, so you'll see everything sort of defaulted to the uh, monitoring path. Right, you know what I am going to do though is I'm going to um, make all these guys a different color. Just cause. So this will be easy to think about how these things are. So what I want to do here is I'm going to uh, solo save my mix buses. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make these. So I'm going to say bus one, two, three, four, five, and six, whatever, that's fine. I usually use um, 11 and 12 for, I usually, that leaves me a few up front for when I'm doing big, big sessions, but this is okay. So anything front is going to be one, two, everything rear is going to be five and six, excuse me, three, four, five, and six. Stereo mix bus is going to be... Um, <coughs> is going to be my stereo mix bus, and I can mute that and not really care about the output so much. That can be our stereo output path, if you will, or anything really. We're just using that as a, a stereo mix down. Um, what I do care about is these guys. So what I want to do is, um, and it, this is going to depend on your interface, so what I want to do is I want to have this output to whatever your hardware is. So. Um, if you're using uh, a piece of hardware that just has four outputs, you're probably going to have monitor one, two, and then the line output. Um, it may be labeled a weird way. Um, in my case, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start out line one, two, three, and four. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say shift option command and bus. Line output 
one, two, three, and four. That should have done sequentially. So now those are going out one, two, three, and four. The other thing I want to do is I'm going to hold down Command. Come on front. I'm going to hit that one, and I'm going to also send that out bus one and two. Also, if you hold down Command, you can send um, outputs to a separate thing. So now this is going to line one and two and bus one and two. My stereo mix bus. This is why I don't really care about that so much right now. Um, I'm going to send this. I don't actually care what this this is or does. I don't really need to listen to it right now. So right now I'm just going to um, send that out. Actually, 3132 is what I usually use. So that's fine. And if I want to add an output so I can listen to that later on, that's fine. And so I'm going to say my stereo mix down is 3132. Uh, and then we're going to say 33, 34, 35, 36. Do it sequential, command, option, shift. Um, and then, so the other thing we want to do is a quad front and rear, we want to send that out to our mix buses. So we're going to go say 33, 34, 35, 36. So now my front should be sending out line one and two bus 1 and 2 and 33 and 34, so that'll get our mix bounces as well as our outputs. Uh, same thing for quad rear. Uh, now I could just send these directly to the stereo mix down as opposed to having a stereo mix bus, but you may want a mix bus for um, any kind of processing or, or um, uh, a sub thing you might want to do on a stereo mix as opposed to what you're doing in quad. All right, here's where it gets tricky. So, um, unlike literally every other digital audio workstation, um, we don't have a panner that we can use. So here's what we're going to do. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to create uh, some buses. First, what we're going to do is we're going to send all of these out um by the front bus and that's going to be so bus three and four so shift option select all those guys the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to send i'm going to create a send to bus three and four on all of these things um and so now theoretically um this pan is going to be your pan for everything because we've got this uh, FMP that uh, follows main pan, whatever that is, stands for. Uh, but that follows my main pan. Um, if you don't want that to happen, like if you wanted to do some cross panning, you can disable that, but that's how you would do that. And basically the way that you're going to mix between your front and your rear is that you have to move things in your front with your main fader and then move things in your rear with your sends fader. Um, if you want to, you can make this pre-fade, all of these pre-fade, so that way you have fully independent control outside of this. Um, and that would be one way to probably mix uh, more effectively than having a post-fade send for your rear. The other thing that I um, may do differently um, just, it's just it, it, all this is, is subjective to your particular project. So, what I might do is send these out a bus that nobody cares about. No, 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 no. So our main is sending out of nothing, but a stereo nothing. That's important so that we get this this uh, panner. Um, and then here, let's go one, two, bus three, four. Bam. Um, and then you can kind of make those adjustments here. You can do these pre-fade or post-fade so that you kind of have, you can build a, a sub-mix using these guys and then have your master mix um, going through that. Now that should theoretically send out both my, uh, my quad and my, my rear. Let's pull in something. Um, Done. 
and you're not going to really hear this <clears throat> because I'm, I'm not sending this through the speakers right now, but um, let's throw that on a new track just so I can make this real easy and bring it in. And then I'm just going to bring that on one of my stereo tracks. And uh, so now if I hit go, I've got that in front. Oh, I know. This should be 3, 4. This should be 5, 6. 6. Oh, it's like that. Let's do this. 6. That's 3, 4. There we go. So now we've got front and rear. So now I can do this. Rear and more front. And I can do, uh, if I want to take off the panning, follows me. I can do some crazy weirdness there. Uh, let's make those guys pre fader. Now, we'll get that there. So I'll do something like that maybe. I don't know. I don't know if this can go over here in a weird place. And this can go like over here in a weird place. So we've got this weird distribution that's happening. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of how you have to do it in a non-HD system. Now, what you can do is you can map all of this stuff to a Mackie controller or Yukon controller, and then you can have some kind of hands-on mixing with that so you don't have to do this with the mouse. And it's significantly more convenient than, than trying to do this, this kind of edit in a non-HD system. Uh, but unfortunately, that is the limit of Pro Tools in non-HD um, if you're trying to do any kind of quad. If you have access to Reaper or Logic, uh, I would definitely recommend trying to do the mix down of your quad project in there. Uh, but otherwise, if you're, um, you know, if you're willing to spend the time, you can definitely make that happen. It's just not anywhere near as fun. Hope that's been helpful.